We had a, a few minutes conversation, but the message was very um, was inspiring in a sense. No? First, uh, there was a, a recapitulation of the long-standing relationships between China and, and, and the Philippines, uh, and the emphasis on very good relations uh, existing through generations. No? Uh, second, uh, the appeal to find constructive uh, um, solutions no, to the disputes that we have with us and the hope that we go in the same direction. So the significance to us is there have been no high-level dialogues between their side and our side uh, for quite some time. So this was an opening and hopefully it will bear fruit. It is an opening because uh, both countries still have issues regarding the territorial disputes in the South China Sea. And the Philippines has elevated uh, this case to the United Nations Arbitral Tribunal. So with this more harmonious relationship between the two countries, are you planning to withdraw? No, no, <laughs> that is, we want to resolve the issue. And the latest meetings in the ASEAN, again, no, even China stated that they were also um, in favor of coming up with that code of conduct at the, at the most appropriate time. So you think, uh, Mr. President, the territorial dispute in the South China Sea with uh, China will be resolved before the end of your term? Uh, we are hoping that uh, either through the COC formulation or the arbitration process no, that that will be resolved. At the end of the day, um, and I really like to emphasize this, our filing of the arbitration is not against anybody, mm -hmm. but rather it should be seen as for everybody. What does that mean? Um, there is a dispute of what the rights and obligations are with regards to each other. So the arbitral uh, proceedings or the formulation of the code of conduct will in effect state clearly what are the duties and obligations of each other, which promotes stability, which enhances the chance for prosperity for all. So not just between the Philippines and China, but every other party will uh, have a clarity as to uh, the UNCLOS provisions on your various uh, rights again and obligations. The Philippine Armed Forces are among the weakest uh, in Southeast Asia and have considerable uh, support uh, from the uh, U.S. Uh, military. Doesn't that involvement threaten the Philippine relationship with China? shouldn't be seen as that. No? It is a defense treaty. It's not meant to be offensive to anybody. It's a long, la a long treaty dating to 1951. Do we have any offensive capability? We don't have a single fighter in the, air, in the inventory right now. We have lead-in fighters that will be start to come in next year when they're trainers. We don't have bombers, obviously. We have a very limited transport capability. We have a, a fleet mostly of World War II ships. So. Um, in terms of uh, managing tensions, there is such a disparity of force that uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, a probability of having a clash of arms. You were elected on an anti-corruption campaign, so-called the Ang Matuid or the Straight Path. And now three senators are detained on corruption charges. And, and one, one ex-president. And one ex-president. The chief justice has been impeached. The ombudsman also has been impeached and they're no longer uh, wrecking havoc mm -hmm. on our judicial system. And are more arrests uh, likely? Yes. Mm -hmm. So long as the evidence is there to warrant the arrest. You know, we, we, will, we will not arrest for optics. No? We will arrest because the evidence is present, the case is strong, and there is a high degree of certainty of conviction. Otherwise, no, we will just give all of these people a get-out-of-jail card free pass. Mm -hmm. When you present a weak case, they're exonerated under double jeopardy. You cannot uh, bring the same charges against them. And your vice president, uh, Jejo Marbina, is also facing corruption and ill-gotten uh, wealth allegations. Yes. And again, uh, that environment was not there a few years back when there was impunity by those who were in power. That, I think, is a major difference also. So, Mr. President, does the leadership in the Philippines have a culture of corruption? Not necessarily. No. And um, again, it, it's, um, how should I put it? Is it, um, is it the ox or the cart? You know, um, it's a two-way street. It's not just, not just the politician. Perhaps some of the demands also by the constituents also have to bear in mind. Perhaps uh, those who form the moral values also have to take a more active role. Hopefully, they are also not part of the cycle. But it is, uh, it is something that uh, is not unique to the Philippines. And I, I guess for, um, in defense of what we're being able to do, that culture of impunity is being challenged. We are putting people behind bars and we are being, bringing them to the course of justice. How are you dealing with the threat of Ebola? Are you now basically stopping uh, Filipinos from working in these um, Ebola-hit uh, African nations? Well, we already had a contingent of Filipinos working as overseas workers in the three countries. Okay? 
Now, there is a, a first identification of the same, contact with uh, each and every one is being addressed, and then uh, refinement of the procedures when they do come back home. Now, for instance, uh, we, had the, we were part of the UNMIL, or the United Nations Mission in Liberia, and we had about 144 peacekeepers. So they came back, uh, they were tested, supposed to be there before they left. They are now back in the Philippines, and they are kept in an island in isolation mm -hmm. for 21 days to ensure that they are free from Ebola. Do you think that this is the best way of handling the Ebola issue by quarantining these uh, Philippine uh, UN peacekeepers on an isolated island? Then that addresses, uh, well, everybody will say, these are our countrymen and we should take care of them, but please not in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. no. So, at the same time, no, um, in case there are any, we, we're supposed to be in touch with both the World Health Organization and also the Center for Disease Control. And we are adopting all of the latest practices to ensure that we are not infected by any of these uh, potential pandemics. Now, having said that, um, doing, actually doing all of these things, no, we will... Um, this, this is the hands-on portion to ensure that the systems are correct in place, yeah, can be sustained. And uh, uh, again, it lessens any pressure on any community that will play host to, to these people. But the idea is there is a need to ensure that for 21 days they're in isolation to, the, to show that you know, the symptoms cannot happen. Ebola, we're told, um, becomes infectious only when the symptoms uh, uh, come to the surface. So 21 days should be enough to rule out the possibility of whether or not they are infected and they undergo the test before they, they are allowed to rejoin the community as well. On that note, Philippine President Benigno Aquino, thank you so much for joining us on BBC World News. Thank you for having us.